Meanwhile, during the height of the Vietnam War, the Soviets celebrated the 50th anniversary of the October Revolution and their technological prowess in the air at a special Domodedovo air show. Soviet Premier Leonid Brezhnev is on hand to greet the chief constructors of the great Soviet design bureaus. Near the end of the show, a new aircraft no one had ever seen before streaked over the runway. Knowledgeable foreign observers did a double take as the three aircraft disappeared into the clear blue sky. The announcer described them as a new interceptor capable of Mach 3 flight. The design proposal dated back to 1958 when Soviet intelligence became aware of American plans to develop high-speed, high-altitude aircraft like the B-70 Valkyrie bomber. In response, Mikoyan designers developed the YE-155 prototype, which was the essence of all MiG fighters that would become known to NATO as the Foxbats. The aircraft was large and powerful. It held the promise of being a true Mach 3 interceptor. Production aircraft named the MiG-25 proved deadly in its intended role as a high-speed, high-altitude interceptor. A powerful new radar named the Smirch, or Whirlwind, was developed for the aircraft. It was capable of burning through any electronic jamming within 70 kilometers. The Foxbat was also able to carry a large new family of deadly air-to-air -air missiles. Photo reconnaissance was a secondary role for the MiG-25. The cameras fitted to the MiG-25R were capable of taking detailed pictures of the entire United Kingdom in the course of one flight. During the 1973 Middle East War, a MiG-25R was clocked over Israel at Mark 3.2. The new MiG's performance caused great alarm in the West. In response, the US government appropriated funds to develop the fast and powerful McDonnell Douglas F-15 fighter. While the F-15 was designed to counter the MiG-25, it was the General Dynamics F-111 swing wing fighter bomber that left a lasting impression on the Soviets. At Sagi, researchers carefully developed experimental swing-wing designs in their laboratory. The first Russian variable wing fighter to take to the skies was the Sukhoi 22i. But the first operational version would be designed by Artyom Mikoyan, a two-time hero of the Soviet Union and Dean of the Russian Fighter Design Establishment. As the world's fighter aircraft grew faster, difficulties with low speed factors increased. Mikoyan's solution was a variable geometry wing aircraft. The new prototype fighter would become known as the MiG-23, NATO codenamed Flogger. Pilots could adjust the wing sweep angle to best suit operating conditions. Soviet pilots were used to the high takeoff and landing speeds of the MiG-21. The new variable geometry system of the MiG-23 offered much better handling qualities at low speeds. The new interceptor featured a powerful Lyulka engine, as well as upgraded electronics. It had to meet the demands of the Soviet Air Force, which called for beyond visual range capability. A pair of Apex air-to-air -air missiles were guided by a Sapphire radar system, which offered limited all-weather capability. While Western designers at the time depended heavily on radar, 
the Soviet Air Force believed in supplementing radar with infrared guidance systems. It was felt they stood a better chance in air combat against increasingly sophisticated electronic countermeasures. The MiG-23 could also carry two to four close-range missiles designed for dogfights. A double-barreled 23mm cannon complemented the missiles, and they proved to be a deadly combination. Meanwhile, the MiG-25 remained Russia's most advanced and secret fighter aircraft. It had been in service for almost four years, but the Foxbat's capabilities were still a mystery to Western intelligence sources. On the 6th of September 1976, a MiG-25 took off from an airbase near Vladivostok and landed unexpectedly at a Japanese airport. Its pilot, Viktor Belenko, had defected. Western experts examined it in detail. The Fox Bat's myths were now unraveled. It was much heavier and simpler than supposed. The huge Chomansky engine guzzled fuel, severely limiting the aircraft's range. It seemed more a rocket than an airplane. The MiG-25 was no dogfighter. It was an extraordinary aircraft, but not the threat the West had imagined. But in the Soviet Union, the Fox Bat continued to break records. Mikhoyan chief test pilot Alexander Fedotov used the MiG-25's incredible power-to-weight ratio to climb straight up. He set many records, including the absolute altitude record of 37,600 meters, which still stands. The aircraft was also fast in level flight. Svetlana Savitskaya set several closed-circuit records before she became the second female Soviet cosmonaut. The MiG-25 design team was awarded the Lenin Prize for its achievement. Mikoyan Design Bureau Director Rostislav Belyakyov was honored along with Nikolai Matyuk, the chief designer. Four other members of the team got their awards for engine, radar and the control system. The MiG-25 was so successful that it provided the basis for the Mikhoyan Bureau's next project, the MiG-31. The new aircraft's ancestry was apparent, but its looks were deceiving. The new fighter, codenamed Foxhound by NATO, featured a powerful phased array radar system, the first of its kind manufactured in the Soviet Union. Instead of using a moving dish to scan targets, it could locate them from above by use of an electronic lens. This method can distinguish moving objects against ground clutter, hence the name look down, shoot down. The MiG-31, unlike all its predecessors, has special equipment designed to share information with other aircraft in the group. This allows the aircraft to work as an autonomous system and represents a major shift in Soviet philosophy. It stresses the pilot's autonomy in the role of free hunter rather than the restrictions of the ground control intercept doctrine. The Foxhound can fire from above its opponents while moving at higher speeds. The MiG's AA-9 Amos air-to-air missiles are launched from semi-recessed positions under the fuselage. 
They have a range approaching 120 kilometers.